Good morning. Oh, well, <clears throat> to those of my generation, <clears throat> and older for that matter, that is the unmistakable voice of Edith Piaf. Piaf in French means sparrow, or little sparrow even, possibly. She was known as that, or la môme, which I don't quite know what that means. <clears throat> She had a very, very tough start in life on the streets of Paris, I believe virtually, literally, actually born. Dans le 19e, la département 19e, in the 19th uh, department, um, just below Belleville, in the sort of northwest of Paris. With her sister and a very difficult uh, dysfunctional family life and so on and so forth and then <coughs> she came to worldwide recognition through her singing um, always just wore that little black dress um, And here she's singing, non, je re, ne regrette rien. So, no, I don't regret anything. And tragically, I believe at the age of 48, with plans ahead of her and so on and so forth, she actually took a meal of ground glass, which of course cut her intestines to shreds. So, I'm sure I'm right on this. She committed suicide at the age of 48. I should have checked it before I kicked off, but um, I read her biography when I was young, and I'm sure those facts have sticked, stuck, <laughs> sticked correctly. <laughs> right, so the theme today is enjoy this minute as my mother always used to say, because it's the only one we've got. So Christ's words are, yesterday's gone, tomorrow hasn't happened, let the woes of today be sufficient unto the day. For part of me, a very large part of me, is that once I'm materially sorted, which I am at present, here I am, it's actually finally rained here in Harpenden, in England, where hurricanes hardly ever Right. Yeah. Anyway, um, it has actually rained, so I can just put my little central heating on. I've got gas, I've got water, you know, I've got electricity, I've got basic, I've got, ah, they wired in my cooker yesterday. There we are. Not only have I got a fridge, I've now got a functioning cooker, but I had a little primer stove anyway, so. I've got loads of food. I've got probably three months of supplies lined up, and just in case, um, which isn't entirely a game, because my old left leg now is 
well and truly knackered. Uh, about as far as I can go is on crutches in the house at the moment. Anyway, the rest of me still works as far as I know. So there we are. Now, enjoy this minute. I've traveled the world. I've done this and that. Um, but I haven't saved the world, have I? I say I've worked and tried to work. <laughs> tried to work. Emphasis on the tried. On the townships, in the townships um, around Cape Town in South Africa, because I was born there. I had a Scottish missionary ancestor, so anyway, I'm a white African. But I'm British. My father was English. My mother's people were Scottish. But anyway, and... Uh, Guguletu, Nianga, and Kailicha are the three I know out there. And they're poor little black babakins, but they're so happy. Those little black babies and little children galloping about in bare feet. <laughs> they're just so filled with life. So, we're a medical family. I mean, my mother's sister was a social worker with poor black people. And the younger sister, Mary Bell, was, that was Patty, Aunt Pat. And then there was Aunt Mary Bell, who was um, on the farm. She used to, you know, have, she married a farmer. But, um, always be lots of little black babies around and trying to look after them and I think trying to work with pneumonia and TB actually is a big killer too. Tuberculosis. And those little black ones, they're always so happy in the bush. We're talking here, this is more in the bush, not in the cities, it's different in the city. In Johannesburg, Joburg or whatever. So enjoy this minute. Well, so I try to do. It's just part of my nature, it seems, that I'm actually happier somehow through the night, up through the night than in the day. In the beastly world, this veil of tears. Now, here's the thing. There is something called millennialism. There is now. Sorry, excuse that. Ice. <laughs> luxury, man. <laughs> it's luxury. I've got a fridge. <laughs> when you come in, I used to go off to the Kalahari Desert and what's now called Botswana, Betshuan land. And you reach a place and they've got a fridge and a bottle of Coca-Cola. <laughs> Cold Coca-Cola. Civilization. <laughs> a fridge. <laughs> Electricity. You see, ice. It's a funny old world. I really have trekked off into the Kalahari Desert in my time. There are three places you're closer to God. Um, in mountains, the sea, by the sea, and in the desert. So, of course, Christ went off into the deserts before his ministry for 40 days. It's clean. The sun absolutely frazzles any bugs. In real desert, just so there's no disease or dirt or anything you must carry in water, <laughs> otherwise, you're dead. <clears throat> so, enjoy this minute, right? I've rambled on a bit, haven't I?
I have this friend, he's a very bright chap, just an English chap, Staffordshire man, in Staffordshire in England, Middle England, uh, or slightly northern Middle England. He can read his parents' Bible in Greek, but he's gone Buddhist. He's just young, but a little bit younger than me. Now, <coughs> we're having this discussion about essentially, you know, does Christ exist and he wants to be a Buddhist and, you know, what's my old Christian nonsense about then sort of thing. And the third mutual friend is a very strong practicing Roman Catholic from Irish background, but he's now in hospital. He's a little bit older. We used to meet up at Cafe Nero and, you know, have an old chinwag. <laughs> Going back many years. Now, he sort of challenges me on this, and I, I, mean, I just say, so what? If you are a Christian, God promises you eternal life. It's not a sort of kind of, if I do this, 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 and this, oh, my reward will be eternal life. It's not like that. It's just not like that. Simply not like that. <coughs> what I'm trying to introduce into this older man now, we're both getting older, I'm 64, he must be 62 or something, <coughs> is that drop your Buddhism and start the first step of the journey on a Christian path. And he just doesn't get it. Well, okay, so I leave him alone then. You know, it's up to him. I absolutely cannot, nor would wish to, try to impose my beliefs upon him or anyone else. I'm exactly the same the other way around. Anyone tries to impose their beliefs, their ideas, whatever, upon me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Well, the rest of me works, I'm alive. Yes, this leg thing is actually quite a serious problem. I'm on crutches for what it's worth. I can't move from this chair to the kitchen just over there, unaided without crutches in the house. <laughs> Obviously with COVID, Royal National Orthopaedic Hospital stand while I'm waiting for the big knee up. Um, nothing doing, so I've just got to muddle on, really. The rest of me works. I've got this wonderful, marvellous machine. I can talk to the world, communicate with the world. There's a world map down there. Somewhere. You can see it. I've traveled the world. <sighs> now I'm pretty much grounded, actually. I could get around with a cab and a, a wheelchair, actually, and that would be it. I'd be off again, wouldn't I? Anyway, ramble, ramble. <coughs> Enjoy this minute, that's the theme. So. Poor... Edith Piaf had this so sort of tragic start in life. I'm so blessed. I had a wonderful start. I had wonderful elderly gentle folk and elderly gentle folk parents. Um, a good education. Mine a public school in England, Mill Hill School for what it's worth. Bristol University for medicine and just, you know, all hunky-dory. Then I had a former wife, child came, Robert Francis, my son, 
<sighs> my former wife had been sexually abused by her own father, and it was all my fault, which is rubbish, but the English courts heard her lies and not my truth. And then my son, Robert Francis, committed suicide at the age of 18, and I'm in grief. He would be 28 years old on November the 12th this year. I'm still in grief. My hair and my beard I do not cut because of this matter, because I'm living for my son to... In my eyes, it's worse than Abraham. If anyone knows the story, Abraham was called by God to take, he, had, they, he and um, Sarai, Sarai <coughs> Sarah, his wife, couldn't have children at a very old age. He did. He had Ishmael with Hagar, the servant, his wife's servant. So that Ishmael is the sort of Muslim. <coughs> uh, and... Then along came his son, who's the sort of start of the Jewish nation through Abraham, and then obviously the Christians. So the three Abrahamic faiths. Uh, it's actually Muslims first because of Ishmael, and then Isaac, and then uh, the Christians later. Take your son, this blessed son, who finally came through his wife, uh, Sarah, <coughs> bore a child at very old age and so on. So God can do anything. And God said to Abraham, he made covenants with Abraham, um, your seed will be like the sand on the seashore. Words to that effect, i.e. there will be as many people as there are grains of sand. And so it is. Uh, Abraham sort of about 2,000 years before Christ, so sort of 4,000 years ago. Take your son, God said to Abraham, this beloved son, who they waited and waited and waited for, and sacrifice him on the mountain. Abraham was dutiful and listened to God, and he prepared the situation. He took a knife and wood, I think, and up they went up the mountain, and Isaac asked him, well, daddy, you know, where's the sacrifice? Abraham said, God will provide. So there he is, he makes the, the pile thing to sacrifice his only son now. Well, actually there's Ishmael, his only son through his wife, Sarah. And <coughs> he's still being dutiful. And then God says, no, no, stop. And suddenly a ram appeared. That's the story. It's in the early, in the Torah, that story. So I knew a chap in, <coughs> I was in Dublin. He was French, as it happens. And that was his reason for saying he's not a Christian, because how can a loving God tell you to? sacrifice your own son but it's god's will all this stuff it's god's will the way he does things we humans are just just listen to god look see try to see try to understand and try to hear what god is teaching us through these matters amen Yes, P.F., <clears throat> not, this, her voice is so distinctive. Forget the past, you must pass it. With my memories. I lit the fire. My hardships and my pleasures. Sweep out your lovers. I'm 
going back to zero. I say I'm into that. Ah. <sighs> 